How's it going, folks? I'm Des with Desfit, and it's been over two years since Course launched their original Vertex GPS Sport Watch. And since then, they've been busy with the Apex Pro, the Pace 2, launching their Evo Lab Sport Science platform. And in the background, they've also been working on this, the Vertex 2, which has maps, music, and quite a bit more that we'll talk about here in just one bit. And the Vertex 2 isn't the only new watch that Course is launching today. Course is also launching a very special edition, Ilya Kipchoge, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Pace 2 Sports Watch. And I'll have another video on this one, which I'll have linked down the description description below. So go ahead and check that video out once you're done over here. So the original Vertex made kind of a splash because it was clearly taking aim at higher end premium sport watches like the Garmin Phoenix line of watches with premium materials as well as a premium look. And the Vertex 2 continues that trend, but this time in a larger case, and it also comes with a titanium bezel that's supposed to be three times more scratch resistant than the original, but it still comes with a sapphire glass screen with a DLC or diamond light coating. And I've been testing the Vertex 2 out for about the last month or so, using it for lots of different activities, including running as well as lots and lots of mountain biking. And I've had zero issues in terms of dirt it basically looks perfect after all that abuse. And I do have lots of data to share from those activities, including GPS, altimeter, and hardware accuracy, and we'll go over those here in just one bit. But let's first talk about the big new features with the Vertex 2. So when it comes to satellites, there's GPS, there's GLONASS, Galileo, Baidu, as well as QZSS satellite systems. And it basically depends on which region you're at in the world, which satellite system is going to get you the best accuracy. Most watches can use one, two, and sometimes three satellite systems at one time. But with Chorus, they went ahead and said, well, let's just go ahead and use all the satellite systems. So there's a setting with the Vertex 2 where you can leverage all those satellite systems at one time. So you basically don't have to choose. You can have it all. But not only that, they also have a dual frequency mode, which allows the watch to communicate with satellite lights on two concurrent frequencies at the same time, which leads to even higher accuracy. And in regards to whether or not leveraging all those satellite systems actually does translate into higher accuracy, I actually have some pretty fun examples where I took the Vertex 2 to the high alpine of Crested Butte to see what it can do. So definitely stick around for that info in just one bit. And then another big thing to come with the Vertex 2 is going to be maps. And not many sport watch companies have onboard mapping at the moment, so this is kind of big. So the Vertex 2 will come with landscape maps for around the world, and then users will be able to download region-specific topo maps for your particular area. Right now, you can access the maps via the toolbox, which you can access by long pressing the lower right-hand button, and up pops the maps. You can browse the map using your finger on the touchscreen, and then you can zoom in and out of the map using the digital dial. So this is what a landscape map looks like. And you can also switch between landscape, topo, or a hybrid landscape and topo map, and here's what all those look like. And here's some pretty awesome news for you, Apex Pro as well as original Vertex owners. You'll be getting region-specific topo maps via a firmware update later this year. Unfortunately, you won't be able to get global nor the landscape maps basically due to some hardware limitations, but still, I think that's pretty awesome that Chorus is backporting the topo map functionality to the Apex Pro and the original Vertex, so big kudos on that. Oh, and really quick, if you're finding the information in this video useful, don't be shy about hitting that like button down below. It definitely helps this video and the channel out a lot quite a bit, and I appreciate it. Now, this is Chorus's first implementation of maps, and I do have some suggestions that could make it better, so hopefully we'll see some of these changes in the future. The contrast is a bit challenging right now, differentiating between roads and trails and then kind of everything else. It's just kind of hard to make out at a quick glance. But the other thing, and I think this is a much bigger caveat, is that you may have noticed that there aren't any street names, and maybe more importantly, for the outdoor adventure crowd, there's no trail names. So Chorus told me that they purposely omitted the street and trail names in an effort to simplify the navigation experience, but in my mind, navigation is all about detail, and I'd just like to see that sort of information, at least at some sort of zoom level, unless it's going to take some massive hit on storage or something like that. At the least, I think Chorus should give the users the option of displaying that information, kind of like already how they have the option to display a landscape, topo, or hybrid map style. Another rather large new feature to come with the Vertex 2 is music, where you'll be able to load your own purchase tracks to the watch via your computer. So just like the maps, you can access the music player through the toolbox, and here's where you can also pair your headphones of choice. So I paired the AirPods Pro as well as the Sony WF-1000XM4s to it with no problems didn't experience any dropouts, it was good to go. You can change tracks, repeat, shuffle, change volume, all that good stuff. Now, there currently isn't any Spotify, Pandora, Tidal, or any other music streaming service integration with the Vertex 2, but Chorus kind of had to start somewhere, so it is at least nice to see that you can load your own purchase tracks to the Vertex 2 and then listen with your headphones of choice. And it does use Bluetooth 5.0. And the other thing that the Vertex 2 has is Wi-Fi. Now, they're only currently leveraging Wi-Fi for firmware updates at this point, but there's obviously a lot more Wi-Fi can do, and I know they are working announce on other features, so I think there's a lot of possibilities there, so I just say stay tuned. You'll also be able to measure your heart rate variability with a tool that you can access from the toolbox, where you place your fingers on the top and bottom of the bezel, making sure not to touch anything else, and it takes about a minute to get your HRV index, and you can also view this information in the Chorus app. 
Another change with the Vertex 2 is that it's actually much larger than the original, where this sports a 50.3 millimeter case and it's 15.7 millimeters thick, and it tips the scales at 91 grams. So this thing isn't light or spelt by any means, but that larger case does allow for the Vertex 2 to have a much bigger battery, and this thing does get some pretty great battery life. The original Vertex already had some pretty good battery life with up to 60 hours of GPS recording time and then up to 45 days as just kind of like a standard watch. And the Vertex 2, for the standard GPS recording, it ups that quite a bit to 135 hours and then up to 60 days as just kind of a standard watch. And then if you use the standard GPS setting while listening to music, that takes that down to about 35 hours. So it definitely does drop that down quite a bit, but that can be said for pretty much any watch with GPS and music playback at the same time. And then in regards to how the battery life will fare using the all satellite system setting, that drops down to 90 hours, which is still pretty awesome. And then if you use the all satellites plus the dual frequency mode, that brings it down to 50 hours. And I found all these figures would be pretty spot on. And for a more real life example of battery life, I had a full charge in this about two weeks ago, and I've used it for about 16 to 17 hours of outdoor activities using the full blown accuracy settings. That's the all satellite systems plus the dual frequency. And I've also used it for about seven hours of indoor activities, and I still have over 40% of the battery left. So it's very respectable. Of course, with that larger case, you will also get a larger display with the Vertex 2, and it has a 1.4 inch screen with a 280 by 280 pixel display, which is kind of gigantic for a watch. So there is no shortage of screen real estate here. It's a 64 color transflective LCD display, meaning that in the sun, this thing really comes to life and it's extremely easy to see outdoors. And then indoors, you can enable a backlight. And then with that large display, you can have up to eight data fields at one time on a data page, and it does also make it easier to view the new maps. And this is a great segue into talking about the fact that this actually is a touchscreen, but the touchscreen functionality is used sparingly, which I'm actually a big fan of. So you can use the touchscreen on certain widgets where you can scroll through historical data, like your heart rate over time. And then you can also scroll through different data pages within an activity, but don't worry, you can turn this feature off or on as you wish. You can also use it with the music player, but most importantly, you can use it to browse the map, which I found to work very well, and it makes using the map on a watch pretty enjoyable. The Vertex 2 also has their digital dial, which some people love. Me, I'm more of a fan of just standard buttons, which may be boring, but standard buttons do just work. However, I do have to say that the digital dial is pretty sweet to use with their map interface, where you can zoom in and out of maps with quite a bit of ease. Along with the touchscreen, it makes the map experience pretty good. The other thing I have to give Chorus props for is that they improved the usability of the digital dial by, first of all, they made it a little bit more flush with the case so it doesn't stick out as much as the original Vertex, but they also made the throw less to perform an action. So another way to put it is that it takes less rotation to go from one screen to another. I found that with the original Vertex as well as the Apex Pro, it just took a lot of rotation to go from one page to another or one interface element to another, and that's definitely improved with the Vertex 2 where it's just a little bit less. Oh, and one last thing before we get into the sports and fitness performance is that it's water resistant down to 10 ATM and it uses a 26 millimeter quick fit style band, which is pretty darn comfortable. Of course, it's pretty well known for good bands and this one doesn't disappoint either. Okay, so now let's get into the sports and fitness performance of the Vertex 2 and we'll first start with GPS. And in regards to using all those satellite systems, well, I, I think it pays off. So let's first start with some examples with running. And if you've been following along on Strava lately, you've probably seen some workouts where it looks like I'm running around like I'm drunk, but I've just been really trying to put this watch through some really hard GPS tests. So on this run here, the total distance lined up pretty nicely. It's very much in line with a bunch of other devices, so we're good to go there. But now let's take a real close look at the GPS track just to see how accurate it really is. So everything looks pretty dandy from a high level. It nailed it where it was right on the sidewalk as I started my run, and it was pretty good on this street right here. Corners also looked pretty decent. On this right-hand corner, it was very precise, but it just barely cut in on this corner right here. But now let's go on to the section where I was going through the park. So on this sidewalk through the little ponds, here it was very good. And then over here, it was pretty good through this figure eight, but I actually went like this through this section, but none of the devices actually got this exactly right. So I guess no worries there. And then over here where I went around this building, it was actually more accurate than the others because I did make this a tight turn. Oh, and before we move on to cycling, I also wanted to mention that the Vertex 2 will also be able to collect running power directly from the wrist without a foot pod. And the trends in running power lined up nicely to both a stride foot pod, as well as a Garmin HRM Pro chest heart rate monitor. With running power, I'm basically looking for the trends to line up rather than the actual number itself. And it does in fact do a good job there. So for road biking, good stuff here where the total distance lined up on this ride and the elevation was also in the same ballpark. For the GPS tracks at these higher speeds, well, it's basically perfect. On the straight line sections, it was solid with no drifts at all. And then on this corner right here, the Vertex 2 was actually a bit more accurate than the other devices where it didn't overshoot the corner by the little amount that the others did. And then for the rest of the ride, it was good to go, including coming out of a tunnel right here. And then on these high speed turns, it was spot on. 
But that was road biking in some wide open terrain where there's no obstructions and it really should do a good job there. But now let's check out some mountain biking where there's gonna be a lot more variables like some varying terrain, switchbacks, lots of tree cover, rock faces, just a whole bunch of stuff that can throw GPS off. And on this right here, everything looked good. The total distances lined up nicely and the total elevation gain also was pretty close to the other test devices as well as the correct elevation figure from Strava, which is based off of their base maps. So if we take a look at the elevation profiles, everything was good to go there as well as it was very close to the max altitude of right around 11,000 feet and the minimum was also in the same ballpark as well. So taking a look at the actual GPS tracks, on the climb, it did great. On the more open section of road, as I started, it nailed it. And then as I started to get up a bit where the canyon narrowed and there was a lot more tree cover, you can see that it was quite accurate. In fact, right here, you can see that the device in green wandered off a bit off the road. And this climb goes through a pretty narrow canyon, which can pose a challenge for GPS. I could keep going and going all the way up the climb, but there's really nothing weird to see here. It did great. So now let's fast forward to the descent where things can get a bit more interesting because of the higher speeds. And this descent was through some really thick tree cover. So coming out of the trees at the start of the downhill, it was just slightly off on the trail, but not too big a deal. And as we descend, you could see that the track from the Vertex 2 was smoother. And that's actually more accurate because this was a very fast downhill and I wasn't making this quick a turns through this section. And as you can see, this is some extremely thick tree cover as we can barely even see the trail in most of these screenshots. So on these high speed turns, for the most part, it did good. It did cut this corner and this corner just slightly, but really not that big a deal. And then finally, as I was descending on this dirt road, which was right next to the canyon wall, it, it nailed it. So now onto heart rate accuracy. So for watches of this size and weight, even when they're tightened down properly, they do have a tendency of bouncing around on the wrist, which can lead to some inaccurate results. So on this run here, we could see that Vertex 2 was close, but there were a handful of spots where it wandered a bit. So it started out okay, a little bit behind the chest and arm heart rate monitors, but a lot of watches can do that at the beginning of the workout. Then it was in line for a while with just a couple wobbles here and there. It did have a little bit of a challenge right here picking up the rise in heart rate, but then it was pretty decent for the rest of the run, except for a few minor drops here and there. And although it was pretty good for running, I experienced a few more issues with road biking. So for the first third of the ride, it was fairly close other than a couple spikes at the beginning and then a couple fluctuations here and there, but then it had a harder time on the tail end of the workout for some reason or another. It still had an average heart rate that was close to the chest and arm heart rate monitors, but there were still kind of those wilder fluctuations at the end. Road biking and mountain biking specifically have a tendency of making watches bounce around the wrist from the vibrations of the road and bumps in the trail, and the larger size and the weight of the Vertex 2 didn't necessarily do any favors for it. And here's a clear example of what can happen. So this is that mountain bike ride that we saw earlier where it was basically a long, hard climb to the top and then a nice rowdy descent to the bottom. So the first third of the ride, it was actually really not that bad in general, at least for mountain biking. But as I got to the top of the climb, which was super chunky, and then I started to descend, the heart rate just got thrown off due to all the bouncing around the wrist, even with the watch tightened down properly. And then for indoor cycling, it was nearly spot on for the entire ride, but there are a few little wobbles here and there, and a couple drops here. But other than that, it's very usable heart rate data. Oh, and by the way, I also used the Pace 2 EK edition on this ride, and you can see that one in blue. Overall, pretty good, except for that one little spike here and a little blip here. And then for weight training, which is one of the most challenging activities for a wrist-based heart rate sensor to get right, this is kind of par for the course for most watches. So you see that it started out high at the beginning, and then it actually did fall along for a little bit but it wasn't able to track the rapid rise in heart rate on these intervals right here, and then miss the boat on this interval right here. But what's interesting is that it actually did a pretty good job with the high intensity intervals at the end. So for heart rate accuracy of running, it actually did okay, but for heart rate accuracy for cycling, it definitely had some challenges, but it's just kind of the nature with these larger and heavier watches. Yes, it's larger, which means you get a bigger battery as well as a bigger display, but there's gonna be some compromises in some other areas. So you can't necessarily have your cake and eat it too. And one more thing with the Vertex 2 you should definitely know about is going to be external sensors. So the Vertex 2, it can pair to a whole bunch of different sensors, but only Bluetooth sensors. There is not gonna be any Ant Plus support. And from what they tell me, that's not gonna be coming in the future. So that's a little bit unfortunate. The Vertex 2 also comes with their new Evo Lab Sports Science platform, which they just introduced a few months ago, where it gives training and recovery feedback based on your past training history. Most of this is tailored just for runners at the moment, where it can provide your running performance index, a race predictor for common race distances, your fatigue level, training load over time, as well as a recovery advisor. And I really like what Chorus is doing with Evo Lab, but I would like to see them expand the availability of some of the data points like training load and recovery time to other types of athletes than just runners, which would just expand the audience for the Vertex 2 as well as their other watches, really. And then one more new feature to come with the Vertex 2 is Insta360 camera control, where you can use the Vertex 2 as a remote control for your camera. 
So of course, it's definitely been busy with the Vertex 2 and they packed on a lot of new features, including the maps, the music, and leveraging all the satellite systems. And for my testing, that definitely works. And I'm also very stoked on the battery life, even using the highest accuracy, all satellite systems and dual frequency mode. But if you don't need that level of accuracy, you can always dial that back to get even more battery life. And with the maps and music, I do think that there's some room for improvement, but I at least do appreciate the fact that they included that with the Vertex 2. But based on Corsa's history of adding features to older devices, I can only imagine that the Vertex 2 still has even more potential. And that brings up price. So the Vertex 2 starts at $699, which isn't out of line for a premium sports watch with maps and music, but it isn't necessarily the same types of maps and music that you'd get with something like a Garmin Phoenix. But again, Chorus is kind of known for adding features to older devices, so it could be well worth that $700 price tag down the road. Anyhow, those are all my thoughts on the Chorus Vertex 2, but definitely let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And also make sure to check out my video on the special edition Elliot Kachogi Pace 2 GPS Sport Watch, I'll have a link down there as well. And if you like the video, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to for plenty more sports tech videos that are coming soon. In the meantime, happy running and we will see you in the next video.